Hey everyone, I'm Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor. Some people find that sleep is a major source of their creativity. Unfortunately, not everyone seems to think this way. Some of history's greatest minds believe that sleep would actually harm both their creativity and their productivity. Today, I'm going to answer the question, does sleep help or hurt creativity? As a sleep doctor, I feel like I need to point out that a good night's sleep is vital to making sure your body and mind are firing on all cylinders. Proper sleep maintains your brain health, and of course, poor sleep has the opposite effect, making it more difficult for your brain to work at its creative and productive best. It's not a stretch to say that it can be extremely difficult to get anything done if you're sleep deprived, but many creative people, famous or not, have experienced sleep problems. In fact, according to an Israeli study, creative people were more likely to report disturbed sleep, which led to difficulty functioning the next day. But why this occurs is still a bit of a mystery. One theory as to why creatives have poor sleep is that being more creative could make your mind more alert, which in turn can lead to more sleep disturbances. But whatever the reason, many artists actually credit minimal or poor sleep for their creative ideas. In fact, there's a concept out there called creative insomnia that states a purposeful lack of sleep can drive up creativity. For instance, Thomas Edison, the inventor of technology such as the light bulb and telegraphs, worked to sleep as little as possible. The story goes that he would actually hold an object in each hand while working, so that when his hands relaxed and he fell asleep, the objects would fall to the ground and wake him up. But then he would get right back to work. In a similar way, the painter Salvador Dali slept as little as possible and would constantly try to wake himself up. Just as he was falling asleep, he would force himself up and then rush to get any ideas he had onto his canvas. Technically, both Edison and Dolly were waking themselves up just as stage one sleep would begin, which is the transition stage leading up to deep sleep. In this stage, you are neither asleep or awake, and your brain can be free to focus on just about anything and make some interesting associations. Now, the real question is, does this technique actually work? Honestly, maybe. One published study found that sleep onset, the stage one sleep I mentioned earlier, might be a creative sweet spot when it comes to problem solving. But hitting that sweet spot requires a tricky balance between falling asleep too easily and falling asleep too deeply. So it can be hard to do. And let's face it, there are plenty of examples of creative people that follow a normal sleep schedule. Albert Einstein actually slept for about 10 hours per night and napped during the day. Beethoven and Maya Angelou both had proper sleep routines as well, going to bed around 10 p.m. and rising at 5.30 or 6 every morning. As for Leonardo da Vinci, he had the opposite of a normal sleep schedule. He'd sleep for only about two hours in every 24. Instead, he was an avid napper taking 20-minute naps every four hours. While most of the world's creative minds had sleep schedules as unique as their contributions to society, what worked best for some of them may not leave you feeling so peppy in the morning. Here are my top four tips for better creativity and better sleep. Number one, prioritize your sleep. I think this is the most important tip for creative people. You need to sleep for your mind to be at its best. Otherwise, you're missing out on vital REM sleep that fuels the creative thinking. Number two, sleep and create according to your chronotype. The world's most creative minds had wildly different sleep schedules. That's because everyone functions according to a unique internal biological system called a chronotype. Remember, your chronotype is your natural inclination to sleep and wake at certain times. Not only does your chronotype define your sleep schedule, it can also predict your ideal productivity and creativity windows. Knowing yours can be a huge boost to creating an effective daily schedule. Number three, get tested for a sleep disorder. If you struggle to get the restful sleep you need to be at your best, you might have an undiagnosed sleep disorder. Sleep disorders like sleep apnea and insomnia won't go away on their own, so it's important to get tested by a professional and get the necessary treatment for a better night's rest. My personal favorite, take a nap. Einstein and da Vinci both included naps in their sleep schedules for a reason. If you're feeling tired during the day, Take a short nap of no more than about 90 minutes. It could give you the boost you need to finish the day strong and get those creative thoughts going. Remember, make sure you're not napping too late in the day. Aim for somewhere between 1 and 3 p.m. when your body naturally produces more melatonin due to a slight core body temperature drop. 
Just remember, while many of history's geniuses have accomplished astonishing feats on little to no sleep, it's quite possible this sleep deprivation might actually have done more to lessen creativity than foster it. Get your seven to nine hours and then go do your thing. This is Dr. Michael Bruce, the sleep doctor, wishing you sweet dreams.